Katie Nelson, like a lot of other people, spends quite a bit of time on the computer, playing games, emailing friends, checking her school's activity schedule, and more. Computers play a big role in Katie's everyday life, as they do in the everyday lives of lots of other people, too. Because computers are so important to all of us, it just makes sense to know as much as we can about these amazing machines. We certainly know that there are different kinds of computers. For example, desktops, laptops, and those giant computers, mainframes and supercomputers. Then there are those that we don't normally think of as computers, but really are. Cell phones, digital media players, and cameras, for instance. There are also many computers we don't normally see, but are all around us, in automobiles and airplanes, and the tiny computers that run many appliances in our homes. But what exactly is a computer, and what does it do? Well, for starters, a computer is a device, a machine, that manages and stores all kinds of information. That information includes numbers, words, music, and pictures. Most computers have different parts to do all that managing and storing. Mercer the Cursor has volunteered to help us explain those parts. Say hello, Mercer. That's how cursors say hello. That's cursor talk for, first, let's look at some things that get information into the computer, or input devices. A mouse is one of them. That's right, Mercer. The mouse is what gives you your energy. It moves you all around and puts you in the proper place, like this. Two other input devices include the microphone, which puts sounds into many computers, and the webcam, which is one way to put video into the computer. We use the keyboard to input letters, words, and numbers, and a scanner to get pictures inside. Once the information, often called data, is inside the computer, it's managed or processed, so we can see it or hear it on an output device. One common output device is the printer. Another is the computer's monitor. Yes, that's right. Speakers are a kind of output device, too. They let us listen to the music and other sounds that have been put into and processed by the computer. Earphones. And yes, earphones, still another output device, can be used, too. Using earphones is the courteous thing to do if the sounds will disrupt others nearby. Okay, let's move on. GPU. Yes, the CPU or Central Processing Unit. That's where information is sorted and managed and changed this way and that, or processed. The CPU is small, but very, very powerful. It's often called the brains of the computer. Our brain is where we think and remember things, where we have our memory. But a computer is different. Its memory isn't in the CPU. In fact, it has its memory in several different places. The first is in what's called the storage memory. This storage memory device is called a hard drive. Once information is in storage memory, it stays there, even if the computer is turned off. The second kind of memory is called RAM memory. When you're working on your computer, what you see on your monitor is usually what's in RAM memory. When you save information like this, the computer puts a copy of the information you see on your monitor, again, what's in RAM memory, into storage memory. The information is saved into what's called a file. Information in RAM memory must be saved in a file, or it will disappear when you turn off your computer or close the program you're working on. Mercer says he'd like to show what happens when you don't save. That's right, Mercer. You can look everywhere. 
but you won't find it because it's gone. So always save your file every few minutes and before closing a program or turning off your computer. Luckily, a little reminder pops up that tells you to save before you close the program, but not always. There are several other kinds of storage memory devices besides the one found inside your computer. CD-ROM disks are one kind, and small exterior flash drives are another. Disks are placed into the computer on trays, and exterior flash drives are plugged in. There are plug-in places called ports on every computer. They are where devices like exterior flash drives and various kinds of cables can be plugged in. Cables carry information from the computer to all kinds of devices, such as printers and monitors. Sometimes the information goes in the other direction. Information isn't always sent through cables. This device sends and receives invisible signals, called infrared signals, to and from this mouse, which, as you can see, has no noticeable connection to its computer. It works just like an ordinary mouse, but without a cable. Computers, then, have a lot of different parts. We haven't even mentioned all of them. With all these different parts, many of them very small and fragile looking, you might think that computers are easy to break. But if you treat your computer and its input and output devices well, they will work just fine for many years. So let's take a few minutes to discuss their proper care and protection. We'll start with the monitor. The first rule for monitor care is don't touch the screen. Fingerprints are unsightly and can smear, making information difficult to read. You shouldn't attempt to clean the monitor either. Some cleaning chemicals can damage the screen. You should handle the mouse gently. Scoot it along on a flat surface and it will do its job just fine. Discs should be handled on their edges so they won't be fingerprinted. And they should never be placed on anything that might scratch them. Scratches can cause discs to malfunction, that is, fail to operate properly. Whenever possible, put the disc in a plastic case or other container where it won't be scratched. Now when you put the disc into the tray, slide it around gently to be sure that it's lying flat. If it isn't, the disc might jam when the tray drawer closes. And speaking of jamming, never jam or force a cable or any other device into a port. If it doesn't slide in easily, it's not made for that particular port. Finally, it's best to keep snack foods away from the computer because sticky fingers make for sticky keyboards. Others who use the computer probably won't appreciate what's left behind. Foods and liquids that could be spilled onto the keyboard, thereby ruining it, shouldn't be placed near any computer. So take a hint from our friendly cursor. Thank you, Mercer. Yes, that's right. So far, we've been talking about what's called hardware. The computer and the things plugged into it. Now, we're going to talk about software. The programs that make it possible for your computer to do all kinds of things. The most important software program on your computer is its operating system. Most computers use the Windows operating systems. They, along with all other operating systems, do several things. First, they help the computer work with its input and output devices. Next, operating systems help other software programs work on the computer. We'll talk about them in a minute. Third, the operating system helps people organize and find programs on their computer and the files they've saved. Finally, the operating system displays the small pictures called icons that, when clicked, allow you to use the hardware, the operating system itself, and all the other programs on the computer. Those programs allow you to type a report for class, send an email to your grandparents, draw a picture, watch a movie or video, and lots more. All these programs often are called applications. You can start an application in several ways. Here's one. On the area of the monitor screen that sometimes has program icons on it, it's called the desktop, you can click 
or double-click the program you want to use. Another way to start an application is to click the Start button at the bottom left of the desktop. It normally looks like this or this. And if you've recently used the application you want to open or start, you'll find it on the left side of the menu that pops up. If it's not there, you'll have to click the All Programs button. When you do, a list of all the programs on your computer pops up. Once you find the program you want, you can click it and the program will open. All application programs have a menu near the top and sometimes icons below it that, when clicked, allow you to do certain things to the words, numbers, sounds, or pictures in the file you're working on. To learn more about them, you can click the Help menu. It can answer almost any question you have about the program. The Help menu also can be activated by pressing the F1 key at the top left side of the keyboard, next to the Escape key. Now we're going to turn our attention to the Internet. Oh, yay! Honey! Ball! Zorba! Adarsh! Ming! Jolo! And I'm good thing all on the Internet! Mercer says he's met these people from all over the world on the Internet and has received information from five continents. He could do it because the Internet is a collection of millions upon millions of computers throughout the world, all connected together by what's called a network. To get onto the Internet, you'll need to open an Internet browser program. Most people use Internet Explorer. When you click it, you're taken to a home page. Often, it's the home page of the company that provides the Internet service to your computer. Sometimes it's another home page. If you're using a school computer, for example, the home page will more likely than not be a special home page set up by your school or school district. Some people set a search engine, such as Google, as their home page. A search engine searches the Internet for what you're looking for. Information, music, videos, games, pictures, and so on. For youngsters, it's often best to use kids' search engines, such as Yahoo Kids, Ask for Kids, or Kids Click, because they show Internet sites that are for young people, not adults. All search engines have a search box where you can type in what you're looking for. In this instance, Abraham Lincoln. When you click the search button next to it, you'll be taken to a list of websites that contain information on your search subject or a page that will give various topics on Abraham Lincoln from which to choose. If it's a list, there's usually a short description of each website to help you decide if it has what you're looking for. When you click the name of the website, you'll be taken to it. If you have a big brother or sister, you may have seen him or her using a chat room or a social network site where people can post their pictures, chat with friends, and write information about themselves they want to share with others. Hopefully, they're following some basic safety rules, because as wonderful as the Internet is, and it truly is wonderful, everyone has to be careful when using certain Internet sites, because you never really know for sure who's on the other end of that chat, or who's looking at your personal web page. It could be someone who's even dangerous. So here are some very important Internet rules everyone should follow. First, never give your last name, your address, your phone number, or tell where you go to school. Next, never email a picture of yourself to a person you've met online. Third, if someone says something that makes you uncomfortable, get your parent. Moreover, you should never meet an online acquaintance unless a parent or parents come along. And you should never give your password to anyone. Always follow your family's internet rules and never open an email from anyone you don't know because it might contain a virus program that could damage your computer. Finally, never order anything online unless your parents are there 
or have given you permission to place the order. Computers, then, are amazing machines that manage and store information, numbers, words, music, and pictures. There are devices that put information into the computer, input devices, and those that allow us to see or hear the information, output devices. Computers have storage memory. Information stays in storage memory even when the computer is turned off. Computers also have RAM memory. Information in RAM memory is what's on the monitor, and it disappears when the computer is turned off. Together, the computer and its various parts are called hardware. Computer hardware will last many years if it is treated properly. So it's important to follow all the rules for their proper care. Computer programs, called applications or software, make it possible for your computer to do all kinds of things, including going on the Internet, where you'll need to follow a number of rules to keep yourself safe. Computers, they allow us to have fun, learn many facts, and do incredible things. They're an important part of our lives today, and probably will be an even more important part of our lives in the future. Which are not input devices? A. Mouse and webcam. B. Microphone and keyboard. C. Monitor and printer. True or false? The CPU is known as the brains of the computer. What you see on your monitor is in A. Storage memory. B. RAM memory. C. Your hard drive. Fill in the blanks. People who take proper care of their computer don't the monitor screen and don't leave or near the keyboard. A computer application is another name for A. Software B. Hardware C. A flash drive True or false? When you open an Internet browser program, you're taken to a home page. Fill in the blanks. Four safety rules for Internet use are and true or false. Plug in places on a computer are known as cables. Fill in the blank. You should never open an email from a person you don't know because a program that looks through the internet for web pages on a particular topic is called A. A browser B. A search engine C. RAM